What's up, world, and welcome to another edition of I Mix What I Like here at The Real News Network. I'm Jared Ball in Baltimore. Today we get to spend some time with one of my favorite people. She's a veteran activist, she's an author, she's an organizer, she's been a vice presidential nominee for the Green Party. When I say people, y'all say power. People, people. When I say Clemente, y'all say Presente Clemente. Clemente. Knows which side she on. We on her side. See, I gotta draw the line. I can't take it no more. If you ain't down with revolution, what you waiting for? Making money for suckers and not communities poor. Ripping flags off a of corpus, man, it's ain't our war. Colonized, terrorized by the world's biggest killers. The U.S. government, the biggest weapon and drug dealers. Filling prisons with children, incarcerating the future. MySpace and Facebook got us stuck on computers. Stuck on Stupid bumping music, that's abusing the shorties, the nonsense that you spitting, they just listening, absorbing. I be dormant, I've awoken. I'm the giant, I'm ready. I'm with the op in Oaxaca, and we holding machetes. So joining us for this edition of I Mix What I Like is Rosa Clemente. Rosa, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Rose, if we could, a, a number of people are in the world are familiar with you and familiar with your work, and we want to talk with you about uh, all of that, as much of that as we can. But uh, let's start with some that, something that I'm not sure that many people are aware of, and that is just your basic background and history. Give us a, who is Rosa Clemente? How did, how did, how did you get to where you are? Um, born and raised in the Bronx, um, 1972, you know, a couple years before the creation of hip hop culture. Um, when I was 10, my parents moved us about a half an hour away, Westchester County. So I grew up um, the first half of my life in the poorest congressional district in America, to this day still the Bronx, to the second richest suburb in America, Westchester County. So, um, and it's interesting because these places are only 17 miles apart and two completely different worlds. And when my parents moved us to Westchester, the type of public schools that I were in, that I was in, and the public school education that I got, I would say now would be considered a very private elite um, education. So I went through a, a great school system, a very small town, everybody knew each other, very multiracial. Um, Every African American and every white person that I went to school with, I was the only Latino, Latina in the whole school at that time. The demographics weren't what they are now. I mean, everybody had a job, everybody had houses, you know, very suburban, utopic kind of life. I was a cheerleader, you know, like <laughs> things that people are like, you were a cheerleader, yes, I was. Um, and then when I went to the State University of New York at Albany, uh, when I got into college, it really just opened my eyes to so many things that I did not know about myself as a Puerto Rican, historically or culturally. I always grew up Boricua. I didn't even speak English till I went to Westchester when I was nine and 10 and put into intensive immersion English only classes. Um, you know, and I was always proud and had great relationships with my family in Puerto Rico, but didn't really know a lot of the actual history of my people. Um, and so for me, college was, for me, the point of departure from my previous life. In terms of what I was learning, um, being in black studies, being mentored by Dr. Vivian Verdell Gordon, who then would introduce me to James Turner and Hakeem Adabudi and Sini Perkins. And those years as an undergraduate at the State University of New York at Albany, I would say I became the kind of political Rosa that people know now. It's where I learned my politics, leadership skills, um, organizing skills, how to be an activist, but also how to really use scholarship um, for the benefit of our people. But I mean, what, what even got you to the point where you would go to college and want to study in that way, I yeah. mean, not everybody goes to college to study about. Well, black, I didn't. Like, oh, okay, right. so how did so, you get there? Yeah. I mean, first, my parents were super laid back. Like, like it was interesting. My, like, my mom never helped me with homework. Um, when it was time to go to college, she's like, "Sure, uh, do it on your own. You know, make it apply yourself financially. Wherever you go, we're gonna pay for it. You know, you want to go. It's all good." Um, and when I got to the state, you know, it's funny, I had applied to the University of Maryland at College Park, but they wanted me to come in the summer program. Mm -hmm. 
And I was like, I'm not spending my last summer up in college. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to SUNY Albany. Mm -hmm. um, the first year I got there, I was a typical freshman. Uh, not, you know, partying too hard, yeah. um, caught up with men real quick, not going to classes, and almost got kicked out of school. And my mom basically said, we'll pay one more semester. If you don't turn it around, we're not paying for school. Now, the funny thing is my tuition then was only $1,000 a year. Because right. wow. the State University of New York public you know, system was only that much, right? right? But I was like, I don't have that type of money. So the second year when I got there, the first week of school, I went to a meeting of the Albany State University Black Alliance. And I remember meeting this brother, Derek Westbrook, who at that time was the president. And he said, if you're a person of African descent, this is the organization for you. So I went up to him afterwards and I said, but I'm not, I'm Puerto Rican. And he's like, let's have a conversation about that. Mm -hmm. And he kind of broke it down. And after that, I said, wait, I want to take a class. So what, what should I do? And he goes, well, go to Africana Studies. That's where I met Dr. Gordon, who was the chair. And she said, just take an intro to black history class and take an intro to Puerto Rican studies. And I said, I'm Puerto Rican. I don't need an intro to Puerto Rican studies. <laughs> and she's like, you know nothing about who you are or your people, and it's not your fault. Take these classes as electives. I was a political science major. By the end of the semester, I was an Africana Studies major and a Latin American Studies minor. And once I spent that year really immersed in, in black studies, in uh, beginning to be mentored by a lot of the black and Latino professors on campus, as well as the administrators, who really were instrumental in making sure that we all had leadership skills. We even had to take a class. So if you were in Black Studies, you also had to take a leadership development class. And um, I had, in high school, always been involved in student government, in Key Club, in Rotary. I always ran for some type of office like that in, in high school. So I was always about joining something. Um, and being part of something. And I became a hardcore member of ASUBA, the Albany State University Black Alliance. And that end of my sophomore year, a friend, a couple people said, you should run and be president. And I'm like, I'm not gonna be president of ASUBA. ASUBA for us was the golden organization. Nobody talked bad about it. Our meetings with three and 400 people a week came to these meetings, our events. It was that kind of organization that you're like, no, this is like a SUBA. I can't do this. Nobody's going to vote for me. And I ran and I won. And um, from there, in, in my subsequent three more years on the campus, it was all about uh, being part of an organized efforts, um, putting on events, uh, shutting down the administration, bringing people like Kwame Ture and Leonard Jeffries and Minister Farrakhan and that kind of 90s time of um, a lot of black intellectuals, uh, but also, you know, our old school kind of scholar activists being exposed to that. I met Richie Perez and then I would meet Maita Morena Vega. And when she came to speak and the speech she made, was the day I realized that I was an African descendant for real, but a black Puerto Rican and Afro-Latina woman. And that was my, yeah, that was college for me was all about that. Well, that's a perfect way to, to, to pause and take a quick break because I actually want to take a, 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 a look in the next segment with you at this uh, career of yours as a hip hop activist and particularly around this, this, this um, work you've, you've been instrumental in leading around Afro-Latinidad and, yeah. and uh, 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 black Puerto Rican identity. So we're gonna pause there in this edition of a Mix What I Like and come back with a part two with Rosa Clemente, so don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. <laughs> 